Are you a billionaire with a heart of gold looking to try and save the world? If you are, you're probably in Davos, Switzerland, where business and political leaders are gathered for the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum. It's like TED Talks for people who own private jets and villas on multiple continents. And this is the forum's first face-to-face -face annual event in Davos since the first COVID wave crashed in 2020. Finally, an opportunity for the world's richest and most powerful people to rub elbows in the Swiss Alps. The hoi polloi included Manchinema, that is Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema, who before spending a little time bashing the filibuster, spent a little time with fellow senator, fellow centrist senator Chris Coons, schmoozing at a ritzy private luncheon with about 50 CEOs, according to people familiar who spoke to CNBC. I know what you're thinking. But as perennial Davos guest and extremely rich person John Kerry told an audience there, don't hate them because they're powerful, love them because they're only there to protect you. When you stop and think about it, it's pretty extraordinary that we select group of human beings because of whatever touched us at some point in our lives are able to sit in a room and come together and um, actually talk about saving the planet. Um, yeah. Hello. You don't need to get me or anyone else on the left mad about Davos and its subtext that the world's true elites, the titans of commerce and geopolitics, whose policies have wrecked the environment, broken the back of working people and concentrated capital in the hands of the very, very few, that these people will save us with business plans and investments posing as globalization. Leftist opposition to the Davos junket has been around since the 1980s. But what's funny is that now right-wing plutocrats are jumping on that bandwagon, taking up the populist mantle, trashing the Swiss elite shindig. Look at noted car salesman and chief twit Elon Musk. Quote, I was invited to the World Economic Forum, but declined, the self-styled disruptor tweeted last month. He later added, are they trying to be the boss of Earth? Thing is, officials at Davos say they haven't extended Musk an invite since 2015. Maybe they didn't like the tuxedo Musk wore to last year's Met Gala, that annual gathering of working people in blue-collar gowns that Musk does attend and that he attended while assembling global investors for his $44 billion bid to buy Twitter. Who can say? It's a mystery. Yes, the hypocrisy of the world's second richest man clowning on the elites is pretty gross. But Elon's not the hypocrite I want to focus on here, because he won't be the next president of the United States. But this guy, he might well be. They do this thing in Davos. They're doing it next week. All these elites come in, um, you know, the World Economic Forum. And basically, um, you know, their vision is they run everything and everybody else is just like a serf, like a peasant. And it's really weakening uh, Western society, Western values. What I've said in Florida is, is that type of stuff coming out of Davos, uh, those policies are, are dead on arrival in the state of Florida. That's noted champion of the working class, GOP governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, railing against those wealthy elites who want to impose their will on the regular guy in Florida. Taking on the elites has become something of a brand for DeSantis as he burnishes his credentials for the 2024 GOP presidential race. What an incredible feat for the man who got his start playing baseball at Yale University. Maybe he was just following in the footsteps of that other Republican man of the people, George Herbert Walker Bush. DeSantis even joined the same fraternity as the two future presidents named Bush. After Yale, DeSantis entered that noble profession, teaching. But not teaching your kids. No, no, no. DeSantis spent his time teaching students at the Darlington School, an elite prep school in Georgia, where tuition fees and board can currently run up to $64,000 a year. From there, it was on to Harvard Law School for populist Ron DeSantis, where the current cost of attendance and housing tops $100,000 a year. It got DeSantis a job doing civil litigation at the White Shoe Law Firm Holland and Knight, which later enabled him him to meet his future wife, a TV news anchor, while playing golf one day, as a man of the people does. Oh, and by the way, that law firm where DeSantis once worked, an investigation by the Daily Beast last year found that DeSantis has steered millions of dollars in Florida contracts their way since he became the state's governor, which was nice of him considering the $100,000 the firm has contributed to his political career. 
They were his third biggest source of corporate campaign funds, according to federal election data. And if there's one thing every man Ron DeSantis knows how to do with his multiple Ivy League degrees, it's how to get money from billionaires. Yes, billionaires. 42 billionaires, to be exact, worth over a quarter of a trillion dollars put together, according to USA Today. That's how many donated to DeSantis as of last year, including members of the Koch family, members of the DeVos family, and the current and former owners of the Miami Dolphins, the New York Jets, the San Francisco 49ers, and the Orlando Magic, plus a Home Depot co-founder and the chairman, oh, this one hurts, of Marvel Entertainment. The vast majority of these plutocrats don't even live in Florida. And the ones who do include Julie Fancelli, the heiress to the public supermarket fortune, who was willing to shell out $3 million for the Stop the Steal rally, you know, the rally that helped lead to the Capitol insurrection. This is America's man of the people, Ron DeSantis. He even takes money from the targets of his anti-populist crusades. Remember Disney? In the same breath that he blasted the Davos elites, DeSantis went after the woke entertainment empire, again, for allegedly kowtowing to the Chinese Communist Party. Disney, you know, they will, they will change things to be able to placate uh, the CCP. You know who else Disney will placate? Ron DeSantis, with $100,000 to his campaign committee over the last four years, according to campaign filings. In fact, just days after that DeSantis presser trashing Davos and Disney, The Washington Post reported that the fundraising committee for DeSantis's inauguration this month was co-chaired by a top lobbyist for Disney. And the night before that inauguration, DeSantis held a candlelight dinner for his top donors. And to cater the event, he flew in the staff of Carbone an exclusive Italian restaurant chain whose flagship New York City restaurant is an almost impossible reservation to get. Drain the swamp! Look, I've told you here at length about the crass authoritarianism of Ron DeSantis, his book banning, his race baiting, his homophobia, his election cops. Every day he rolls out a new infringement on the rights of ordinary Floridians and calls it freedom. But beneath all that hypocritical veneer is a deeper, darker contradiction, the fake populism of a well-connected billionaire courting Ivy League lawyer who claims to stand for you because he stands against the elites of Davos. We know the damage that those elites have done to the world. We know it. But what if the hypocritical, though shameless, Ron DeSantis and his growing roster of 42 conservative billionaire pals succeed in taking his fake populist roadshow to the White House? Just imagine the damage that they can do then. Joining me now to discuss the elites and their new elite critics from Davos to Daytona Beach is Peter Goodman, global economic correspondent for the New York Times and author of Davos Man, How the Billionaires Devoured the World. Also here with us, Molly jong Fast, special correspondent for Vanity Fair and host of the Fast Politics podcast. Thank you both for joining me. Peter, you literally wrote the book about Davos and the financial and political elites. And what do they every year do in these uh, Swiss Alps? I have to ask, what do they do and why are they upsetting the people like Ron DeSantis? What do you make of this anti-elite shtick from Ron DeSantis, the pal of 42 billionaires? It's artifice every which way. You know, what do they do? They get together in Switzerland under this mantra, committed to improving the state of the world, which is this wonderfully uh, rich phrase that gives the game away because the people who are gathered there are by any measurement, the ultimate beneficiaries of the status quo. And Davos is this mm -hmm. elaborate uh, shell game uh, of a change agent that's really a prophylactic against change. I mean, and from the outside, it's just a bunch of conferences on all the sorts of stuff that you would expect, climate change, uh, the future of work, automation, gender and racial diversity. And, you know, someone there believes in just about anything. And they put out uh, these various manifestos that essentially amount to, you know, good is good and bad is not, and yeah. but we're studying how to get our way out of it. I mean. That part doesn't count because what's really going on in Davos is 
the cool kids, the people who are paying the freight hundreds of thousands of dollars to attend. These are the CEOs of, of giant financial corporations, yeah. tech firms. They're not even going into the Congress Center to go to any of these seminars. Now, I've seen them go in to, I'm not making this up, submit to a simulation of the Syrian refugee experience where they get blindfolded and they're led around in the dark while someone's screaming at them, demanding papers in Arabic, and then they congratulate one another for their empathy, and they go back to, you know, a banquet sponsored by HSBC or Google or whoever. But what's really going on is they're sitting in suites privately, often beyond the Congress Center, meeting one another, schmoozing, doing deals. Uh, it's just a business conference, really, wrapped up in this virtue signaling uh, yes. edifice. So Molly, Peter mentions the cool kids. Let's talk about a guy who spent his entire life wanting to be in with the cool kids, uh, Mr. Elon Musk. Uh, Eight billion people in the world, and Musk can fit in an elevator with the other richest guys on the planet. I'm not sure what's funnier here, Molly, that he didn't get an invite to Davos or that he seems to have lied about getting one and rejecting it. You know, it's funny, I mean, I, I think they should just invite him next year because it's going to be a lot less trouble than him sent, doing these Twitter polls that are like, should Davos control the world? I mean, I don't know. I don't think anyone is particularly a fan of Davos except that, you know, 500 people go. I mean, the rest of us don't care. I mean, that's the sort of weird thing is here you have, you know, what maybe now the second richest man in the world complaining about not being invited to a conference. I mean... You know, this is not like a real problem. I mean, and I think like but Molly, what I love it, it's not a real problem. But what him and Ron DeSantis are doing is kind of dangerous because I mean, put right. aside the kind of anti-Semitic tropes of putting up a poll around does World Economic Forum control the world, but just focus on the fake populism of it. It is this right. idea that we are men of the people standing up to those elites, as if Ron DeSantis and Elon Musk are not the elite. Right. No, I mean, it's crazy. And it, look, Trump opened the door to this, right? Trump, a person who inherited his father's construction business, was, you know, fighting against the elites that he was, right? He went to Penn, his kids went to Penn. Like, this is not a person who represents like a hard scrabble life. But again, you know, I think that this is sort of, we're seeing now, you know, um, we're seeing a sort of continuation of this in the Republican Party because the Republican Party doesn't have any policies, right? They just have shtick. They just have culture wars. They just have, you know, this yeah. kind of thing. So we're going to see more of this because this has has netted elections for them in the past. I think it's always been part of the Republican Party, even going back to the likes of Reagan. But obviously, Trump took it to the next level, with the whole blue-collar billionaire nonsense, even though he's not blue-collar and he's not a billionaire. Uh, Peter, this is being billed as the first post-pandemic face-to-face annual meeting in Davos. Right. Meanwhile, we still have thousands of people dying globally of COVID every day. You have a report last year from Oxfam saying the pandemic and existing wealth inequality together have created a new billionaire every 30 hours, including 40 brand new farmer billionaires. Uh, Davos attendees want to save the world, in John Kerry's words. Yet they seem to be the only real beneficiaries of this new pandemic world that we live in. How out of touch, how tone deaf is this gathering? Well, uh, these things are not coincidental, right? This, all this talk about saving the world, I mean, it's engineered to prevent the rest of us from actually changing the world through the exercise of democracy. I mean, it's, it's the billionaires saying, we've got this, you know, we'll take care of climate change, we'll take care of vaccine inequality, uh, we'll take care of uh, all of the problems that we're grappling with. So you don't have to tax us, you don't have to engage in a, a progressive taxation, antitrust enforcement, you can just leave us to fix everything. And we've, of course, lived through a half century uh, trial run of how that works out, and it doesn't work out very well. Now, let, you know, let's note the fact that Albert Borla, who's the CEO of Pfizer, uh, is at Davos taking a bow for vaccine uh, inequality. I mean, making sure that everyone benefits from these magical elixirs that Pfizer has delivered, thank you very much, uh, by capitalizing on publicly uh, financed uh, research. And, you know, we're still in a moment where there's a couple billion people who don't have these vaccines because vaccine inequality, it's like a great talking point at Davos. It's the stuff of press releases. Meanwhile, in reality, 
publicly traded companies that run uh, our pharmaceutical industries, they are selling their goods to the highest bidder. And in fact, Pfizer has been steadily uh, increasing the price for its vaccines and making sure that its profits continue to go up, yep. even as inequality widens. Quick last question to you, Molly. 20 seconds left. Do you think fake populist Ron DeSantis can beat fake populist Donald Trump? I don't know. It's going to be a fake populist primary filled with lots of fake populists, all of which will try to outpopulist the other.